What is up, my friends? Welcome to another edition of the XFL Week in Review. I am your host, Mark Perry from XFL News Hub. And on this week's show, we are right in the middle of breaking news as we speak. We are live, uncut, uncensored, but we have the uniform announcements happening right now. So four have happened. Four more to go throughout the course of the next hour or two. We'll see as they keep coming out. We will just cut and go straight to it. For those of you watching live on the YouTubes, welcome and join us on the chat rooms. Our site is getting hammered right now with traffic, which is great. If you're listening to this on the podcast, well, clearly you're listening to this days later. Just head over to xflnewshub.com and get uh, a look at all the different uniforms. that are revealed. So as of right, this live recording, we have four that went live. There are more to come within the next hour or so, but just head over to xflnewshub.com, your number one source for all things XFL to see and check out these uniforms. And we'll get to those in a second. So how do you get in touch with the show? Well, you email podcast at xflnewshub.com with your MP3s or call 888-430-7692. Extension 3, cutoff time is 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. Remember to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We'll read it on the next show. And, of course, we have the question of the week, which was based off of one of our articles that we just did, which is where should the XFL championship game be played? So right now, they haven't announced where it is. Is it going to be Las Vegas? Is it going to be in uh, Miami? Who knows where it's going to be? And we have a great article by Max Uh, He wrote about where he thought the XFL championship game should be. We have that as our question of the week, and we'll get into what fans think, and we'll get to that later in the show. Remember, you can check me out on Dallas, 1160 AM KBDT Sports Day with John Clements on Saturdays and Sundays. And, of course, we are live every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern on the YouTubes for this podcast. Now, we have a contest that we're running, and we announced it last week. So if you're one of these jabronis that wants to get their hands, did I get rid of it? Uh, Hold on. Oh, here we go. On one of these XFL, awesome XFL footballs. You've seen them. It's got the team logo. It's got the special grip things, and it's got the X's at the end. If you want one of these, you need to either A, leave us a review on iTunes, or B, Go on to YouTube and subscribe to the show. It's that simple to be entered. And you'll win one of the XFL footballs of your choice, a value at $250. Winner will be announced on February 4th, the February 4th episode of XFL Week in Review. Now, that's iTunes review or YouTube subscriber. Now, that's how you enter the game to play. That's how you win. If you... Don't have iTunes, I can't help you there. If you don't have YouTube, you don't look at YouTube, you're weird. But one of those two ways to enter to win. If I do it any other way, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work for us. So that's how you win the XFL football. That's exciting, right? So all you have to do, remember, iTunes review. Or subscribe on your YouTube channel. That's it. So for those who are joining us for the first time and we are live and getting crushed right now, our site is getting blown up like crazy, which is fantastic. I'm looking at the numbers now. It's huge. Welcome. Make sure you subscribe. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. I love comments, too. And leave your comments. We're going to get into next week's question. Well, we'll just tell you what it is right now. It's who has the best XFL uniform. We don't know yet. We don't have all of them released, but we will have that up shortly. So, my friends, without further ado, let's just get into the week that was the XFL. All right, so we have it right now. As of this recording, we have four and you can see on our image, four uniforms that have been released. All right, well, let's go through 
what we have so far. So of the four uniforms, we have first up, drum roll please, the DC Defenders uniform, red and white is the home colors with the logo on the helmet as a red helmet. A couple things to note when it comes to the uniforms that you need to be aware of. First, we do have a price on the uniforms. So right now there's no brand emblems on it. We don't know if this is Adidas or Puma or who's in charge of these, but we do know this. Home replica jerseys, like the one you're seeing on the YouTubes or the one you're hearing me talk about on the podcast, are $79.99 at shopxfl.com. That's right, fans. I want to ask to my fans in the chat room, $79.99. You interested in the XFL home jerseys? Now, if you want the authentic jerseys with number 20, remember we talked about this earlier. We, we talked about this on our previous podcast when the idea was, it's like, well, they're not going to get merch revenue. And like, uh, you know, guys, but basically what's happening is the XFL, you can buy authentic jerseys for 20, with the number 20 on it for $225. $225. So you get one of the DC uniforms, for example, or any of the other. So if you want a jersey with a number on it, it looks like, All of them are going to be sold without player names on them, and it will just have the number 20 on it. And that's how you can rock a jersey. So home replica jerseys are retail for $79.99, and the authentic jerseys with the number 20 will retail for $225. That's the jersey. Now the question is, my friends, and all of you on this chat room are wondering, when can you buy this stuff? Well, the answer is quite simple. You can get it December 17th on XFL shop.xfl.com. December 17th, 2019. Let me check my calendar on what day that is. The 17th is a Tuesday. So two weeks from today, you'll be able to get the jersey of your choice. You can be able to order this stuff on XFL.com just in time for Christmas. So we have the DC uniforms, which is the red and the red with the white coloring. Dallas. We're taking a look at Dallas here. Dallas has the black with the, I like that cool kind of uh, blue logo. The helmets are blue. Again, um, with the team colors, we all know that. You guys at home can't see this stuff, but the black, actually, so far, as we're looking at this right now, I'm liking the the, uh, Renegades one. So Dallas Renegades, it's got black shorts, it's got the team colors on the side, kind of cool. I'm digging the Dallas Renegades ones. What do you guys think in the chat room so far? All right, so that was number two. Number three is the New York Guardians. All I got is one picture. Again, same thing, black and red and gray for the New York Guardians. I understand that the away uniform is going to be gray with black. But there you have the New York Guardians uniform. Liking that, too. So far, so good. I'm liking these uniforms. And then finally, we have the Houston Roughnecks uniform. Taking a look at theirs. The gray, red, and blue. Gray helmets with the logo on the top. I mean, it's interesting about the Roughnecks logo and the Roughnecks uniforms. Head over to xflnewshub.com to check out um, on all these cool uniforms. Again, we're, we're only at four. I'm checking the Twitter Oh, wait, we have breaking news. Are you guys ready for another uniform to pop up? We have another breaking news one. This time, are you ready for it? We have the St. Louis Battlehawks uniform has come out. Let's cue that up for our friends there. And let's take a look at the Battlehawks. So Battlehawks just came out 
not too long ago, 11 minutes ago, you have the blue and the gray and the Battlehawks helmet, which is kind of cool at the top. The, actually, I really like the helmet. Oh, the helmet's actually really cool. Uh, we got a picture of that gray pants. But the helmet with the logo on it is, I'm liking that logo on the helmet. What makes the St. Louis Battlehawks unique, and their uh, away will be blue, the white with the blue pants, it looks good. Oh, man, is the Battlehawks helmet. It's basically the logo takes up the whole helmet, not just a side of it. It actually takes up the front, too. That is unique. I don't think of, is there any other helmets that are like that? I mean, let's take a look back real quick of the other teams. DC's helmet is on the side, just like, you know, what you typically see in the NFL. Renegades, let's cycle through here. Checking out the images. New York Guardians, we don't know yet. But the Renegades are on the side of the helmet as well with the stripe down the middle, which is kind of cool. New York, I assume, this is the only picture we have so far of New York, but I would assume that their logo is on the side as well. And then, of course, we have Houston, which, again, with the logo on the side. So the Battlehawks is very unique. And that their logo is on the front, which is really kind of cool. So, chat room, since we're hanging out together, what do you guys think so far? Now, here's the thing. Uh, let's see. Rangers King 669 says, don't forget you can customize the jersey number and name it if you buy the jersey in stadium during an NFL game. Not sure where I heard that. Jerseys must be authentic to be customized. I didn't hear that anywhere, but that would be something interesting. Uh, let's see. Joshua Johnson says, not bad. Somebody's nine years old. Okay. Richard Humphrey, DC is okay, but I really like Houston, St. Louis, Dallas, and New York. Yeah, I'm with you on the uh, Dallas one. I'm not, like, loving it. But, I mean, St. Louis and Dallas to me so far. Uh, Dave the Usher says, I'm actually mad on how good the Dallas Renegades unis look. Must be a DC fan. Uh, Joshua says, I like the metallic helmet. Stone Cold 10X, love the roughness helmet. Yeah, that's a pretty cool. cool. Uh, let's see. So people like that. Uh, can I get 200 subs with no videos? Awesome helmet. Really digging it like the Eagles. Okay. So there you have it. Uh, Redskins King 669 says, I got the customization info from a press release and it was put into an article by the Dallas Morning News. Interesting. Interesting on that point. Thanks for that information. So there you have it. There you have the uniforms out so far. So what we're going to do is as this stuff is breaking, we're going to get into the rest of the news this week. And then, of course, your social media and everything else like we normally do. But we'll do that right now. So let's get into the rest of the XFL news this week. All right, the XFL blocks CFL's Eskimos from talking to Vipers offensive coordinator Jamie Elizondo. This was kind of big news this week past week. Looks like the XFL was getting serious about his contracts. First, we had this whole Josh Johnson, LA Wildcats deal where they were like, XFL was like, no, you signed a contract. Well, now we learn that the Tampa Bay Vipers offensive coordinator, James, Jamie Elizondo was blocked as well. According to Farhan Lajal says the XFL has denied permission for the Eskimos to speak with Jamie Elizondo about their head coaching vacancy. I believe he would have been the favorite to land the job. Tough break for him after not being allowed to speak with the Riders before this past season. Alonzo followed head coach Mark Tressman to Tampa Bay from the Ottawa Red Blacks of the CFL. He was the offensive coordinator under Tressman. But this was interesting 
is the XFL did let coaches go earlier. So way early in the season, way early before players were picked, Todd Washington of the D.C. Defenders was allowed to take a job with the New York Jets before the start of the NFL season. Also, Catherine uh, Ratchi was a somebody high in the front office, one of the first female general manager types, and she left the Tampa Bay Vipers to head to the Philadelphia Eagles. But keep this in mind that all of these things took place before the XFL season start. But now that we're ready, we're locking and loaded, and tomorrow we're going to have our first practices, which we still haven't heard officially from where all the practices will be located. I hope this is not a last-minute thing. Well, hopefully we'll get to find that, that stuff out soon. Those things are taking place tomorrow. So clearly, we're all locked in. Everybody's locked in. And be prepared that we're going to hear these stories about coaches and players wanting to get picked up, even though fantasy football season's basically over, except if you're good like me, of course. My game, my game continues. My season continues. But these players coming and going, there'll be some interest in XFL players. But that's a no-no because the XFL season has officially sort of preseason begins tomorrow. DC Defenders wide receiver Max McCaffrey was suspended from the NFL, but hey, but it's not the XFL. So in a sudden stacked XFL DC Defenders wide receiving court, Max McCaffrey is looking to make a name for himself after struggling to make the field with the Raiders, Packers, Jaguars, Saints, and 49ers. That's a lot of them. It looks like there's another speed bump in his NFL career. After serving a four-game suspension last season, he's facing a 10-game suspension in the NFL to close out the 2019 season. We're not aware of the nature of the, uh, of the suspension. Usually a 10-game suspension is either personal conduct or potentially some kind of drug use, perhaps steroids, like or performance-enhancing things. We're not really sure. But now he's on the D.C. Defenders, so that – Suspension by the NFL is not going to carry over for the XFL, we assume. We'll see if he's in training camp this week, and we'll find out. Maybe we'll get a quote or something from team management. But, yeah, guys that are suspended in the NFL, it doesn't count for the XFL. We don't know what the XFL drug policy is or any of those kind of things, whether or not they're even going to do that at this as a juncture. But that's a good question to ask. But he will be part of D.C. Defenders. Brings, uh, he's 6'2", 4'3", speed. He's pretty good. He'll work with Pep Hamilton. He'll go alongside Eli Rogers, Trey McBride, and possibly Rashard Davis, another veteran target, Cardell Jones. And I believe he is brother of Christian McCaffrey. Check me if I'm wrong, but I believe he is. Uh, the NFL McCaffrey, which basically is almost an MVP, and he is a beast of a monster. Workout beast, too. So he's suspended in the NFL, but not for the XFL. We've heard about players passing up their XFL opportunity, but one guy, Edmonton Eskimos, Jake Serenasna, was a guy that decided to remain in Canada. So the CFL defensive lineman was uh, drafted by the D.C. Defenders but in the XFL's 30-round fifth phase. Great sleeper pick, and the defenders would have benefited from his interior pass rushing skills, but he decided to stay with Canada. He went with NFL camps with the Jets, Giants, and through he has yet to see the field. An American football team, he, sh he hasn't been on the field for American pro football, but he's played well in Canada. His rookie year in Ottawa, he posted two sacks, and last year with Edmonton, he produced eight QB takedowns. At 6'5", 295, a deal three technique type guy, the CFL has a longer season and a lot of football. He said was he was worried about the injury status of XFL players. Quote, I've been at all levels of football and the importance of a broad-based insurance program cannot be understated. That's what Oliver Luck said. Apparently, that was something that Cicerina was worried about, getting injured in the XFL and decided to stay with the Canadian Football League. And since part of what he said, too, was that he was worried that there was no kind of players association for the XFL yet. So that's why he was a little worried about 
getting with the into the XFL. So we have your social media stuff. We'll check out the Twitters to make sure that we're not missing anything. We'll be right back. So stay tuned, my friends. What's up, XFL Army? If you're a fan of the XFL News Hub and you have a telephone, which I know all of you do because you're sitting there playing on your phones all the time, then why not download the XFL News Hub app? That's right, it's on iTunes. It's on Android. We have an Android version and an iPhone version of the XFL News Hub app. So what do you get? You get the latest news from XFL News Hub, the premier source of XFL news in the universe. Plus, you get push notifications when we have breaking news. You be the first to know. You can leave a comment on some of the news right from your phone. Plus, you get this podcast on your phone as well. Maybe you can leave us reviews on the Google Play Store or iTunes. It links to other social media, our other social media accounts, and so much more. Be in the know. I know you're on your phones. People are on their phones all the time. They never get off their phones. So why not just download the XFL News Hub app on your Android or iPhone today? All you need to do is go to the Google Play Store or iTunes and just type in XFL News Hub. That's XFL News Hub. Download our app on your phone today. All right, we are back checking the our friends over on the chat room. Did you do the Vipers yet? No, no Vipers yet. Uh, we still have four more to go. I figured the Vipers would come out because they're on the East Coast. Figured that they would come out by now. Still haven't seen anything yet. We're still, you are still ahead of the game, my friends. You still have four more to go. So now that we are back and we check things and things are okay, let's get into some of our social media friends. Oh, and also remember our question of the week is where should the XFL championship game be played? Next week's question, who has the best XFL uniform? And don't forget our contest about winning a very own XFL football. How cool is that? From your boys, from your friends at XFL News Hub. I'm trying to, trying to be real. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen, they have some deals like Black Friday deals. I just ordered my DC Defenders sweatshirt that was like 40% off. That was a Black Friday deal. I think Cyber Monday, everything was 25% off, even though I'm a season ticket holder, so it doesn't matter. Snooty, Mark, yes. So that's something that you guys can consider, too, to get some gear for your friends and your family for the XFL season. Simple. All right, on to our Twitters first. Jen J says, but 125 to buy one? That's crazy. Yes, we're talking about the footballs. But look at this, my friends. Check out these footballs. I mean, we're going back to our little B-roll here. The footballs are sweet. They're custom-made. That's why they're so expensive. So you can get one of your very own. Only 125 bucks. Not that bad. Well, I mean, it's expensive, but it's cool, man. Don't you wish you had one of the black XFL footballs from back in the day? Would you pay 125 I would. A friend of mine has the black football, and I want it. I might go rob his house, but don't tell him that I would do that. All right, on to the Twitters. Aaron Ponder says, Josh Johnson, Perez QB battle shaping up for the Wildcats. Got to give the edge to Johnson probably to get the job. Let's go Wildcats. Yeah, I'm with you. I think Josh Johnson's got the... He's definitely in the lead for – he's got – I was thinking he was like a top number one pick overall in the X, XFL. I think he's going to do great, especially with – um, with uh, what's his name? Norm Chow. I think he would do great. So he is up there. Now, our man Matthew is coming out with an article real soon about – the quarterback controversies going into minicamp because minicamp is tomorrow. That's right. Not next week, tomorrow. So there'll be an article up that up on that this week on your boys, XFL news hub.com. Check that out. It's kind of where he thinks these quarterback battles are going to go. And that is one of them. No doubt about it. Jen also sent us a message and tweeted everybody else that there's a bunch of stuff on sale 
uh, 47. There's a bunch of hats. You can go check those things out. There's a bunch of merch on sale. Uh, let's see what else we got here on the Twitters. Um, did you buy your XFL tickets? Yes, I did. Um, let's see what else. Scrolling through. How the bleep did it get leaked? Uh, some of the stuff came out already. Uh, Stone Cold 10X says, looks like U of H uniforms. Mickey J says, they are really cool. Reminds me of the Texans. And Samuel L. Lynn, I'm confused. How are they releasing each team's uniform? All right. I was wondering what was going on with that, too. So we were waiting and waiting, and we were like, should we do this podcast tomorrow? And then we found out that they will be releasing them tonight, the uniforms. But each team, I think they wanted to do is each team kind of had their first team meeting, and they wanted to release the uniforms with the press there. Some people in the media some fans, and then kind of release it one at a time and then kind of release it to the wild to the to kind of string it along versus one drop, which is fine by me. And I really think I, I bet you that was a decision by the coaches that they wanted to, you know, kind of build that team bonding. Like, hey, this is who we're going to be for the next season. So it's trickling out today. And we'll see more as and well, as soon as we hear, we'll let you know. On to the Facebooks. Zach says, I heard from Kurt, I think he's talking about Kurt Hunsinger, that they are going to just alternate markets from year to year. However, he did not disclose to me which market, not Mark, market, was going to host this year, but apparently each market will get their turn. I think he's referring to the mini, the uh, training camps. I'm not sure if he's talking, didn't disclose to me who was going to host this year, but apparently each market will get their turn. Maybe he's talking about the championship game. I'm not really sure what he's referring to, but Zach, top fan. About uh, Landry Jones, Jamil says the Renegades will win the XFL championship before the Cowboys make it to the Super Bowl again. Great question. Over, under, who is going to win a championship first? Your Dallas. Um... Renegades or your Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Cowboys. XFL cities that should be considered for its championship game. This is the article we talked about by Max. Tons of people reacting to this. Daniel says, put it in San Antonio. They could play at the Alamo Dome, which is in the outskirts of downtown, walking distance from the Riverwalk. San Antonio Commanders had great support for the fans. I could pretty much guarantee excellent turnout for the XFL championship if played in Texas, especially in San Antonio. I don't have a problem with that as long as it's something plays cool. Joe says, personal opinion, the championship game should be played at the worst team stadium every year so those fans can at least see one good game a year. That's actually not a bad idea. Wait, but, well, no. Since Vince McMahon owns it all, I guess he doesn't care if you tank it so that you can have a championship game. That's an interesting idea. Just think if the NFL did that, how many games would be played in Cincinnati? Oh, yeah, but not in Baltimore. No, 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 not in Baltimore. Not, not, not that we got Lamar. MVP. Who's going to win a championship first, Baltimore or DC Defenders? I'll throw one that that one out at you. Or will both win in the same year? Hmm. Let's see. Lou says U.S. where they play the Senior Bowl. Okay. Jared says Casey, I, lo- I would love or Minneapolis, but I don't expect it. Yeah, I don't expect that either. Uh, let's see. Talking about the supplemental draft picks. Jared says St. Louis got the best player, Terrence Williams, another former Dallas Cowboy. Yeah, I think that was a good pickup by them. I think that was a great pick. I was a little surprised. Were you guys surprised? I was surprised. On to our question of the week about the championship game being played. We threw it out there to our friends, a lot of people on the Facebooks. Anthony says the highest seeded teams home, the highest seeded teams home field. 
Alphonse seeded. So home field advantage for the soup championship game. That's not a bad idea. At home field, the highest seeded team playing in the championship. That is the best way to build the fan base in the market. People are not planning trips a year in advance to the XFL championship game like they do for the Super Bowl. So there is no reason to choose a neutral site like the NFL does. That's an interesting. I like that idea, actually. What do you guys think? Chat room, what do you think? I, I like that idea. Again, and remember, my friends, on the chat rooms, posting on the social medias, sending us messages, the XFL checks this stuff out and talks to and is in co contact with people like us. So they're reading that stuff. Let's see. So San Antonio, Texas, Daniel, Nashville, Tennessee, good turnout in the south is the way to go. James, got to be warm out. Detroit, Dave, Detroit, Orlando. Detroit? No. No, thanks. No Detroit. Orlando, yes. Disney World, Star Wars. Oh, could you imagine hanging out at Star Wars, getting on a bus, checking out the XFL championship game, then going back to Star Wars and hanging out and celebrating as the D.C. Defenders win the championship? Can you imagine? Does it not get any better than that? In life, Star Wars XFL. Oh my goodness, that is that is a that is wonderful. Brandon says Detroit, so we can witness a championship game. All right, now, now you make me feel bad. Now I'm feeling a little terrible about Detroit and distant Detroit because you guys haven't got to see anything. Maybe Detroit. Is it going to be nice out in Detroit in April? Are we going to be all right? Question of the week on to the Instagrams. Moonlight Bateman says, the dome at America's Center, us. Let's hope it will be played at all. Oh, okay, Josh Thulman. Cleve Kiva Land, they never had bleep, okay. San Antonio again. Fred Gems J whatever. Another San Antonio person interesting that san antonio fans what do you guys think in the chat rooms huh where do you think championship games bull party says an xfl stadium would be in order so that they can host it the xfl stands where it knows each year uh let's see uh robert says i believe that the game should be played and maybe in las vegas I've been thinking about that and maybe we can see if the league does expand. Boston would be a great fit as a great sports city. Mm. Stone Cold 10X International would be cool to have a championship game in London. I would like to go to London to go see a D.C. Defenders championship game. Uh, Rangers King 669 at XFL News Hub. The argument you made for Orlando kind of matches what I was saying for playing at the NFL Draft City, except a bit more football oriented. True, true, true. Oh, Christian says the Viper unis are out. Is that so? Let's take a look at. Oh, yes. All right, friends. We are here live doing this thing live. So let's check out our next uniform reveal is the Tampa Bay Vipers. All right, here you go. Wow. Lots of green. What do you think about the green and yellow? It definitely, does that look like that one that was leaked? I don't think so. The Vipers. Helmet's kind of cool. That's a lot of green and yellow. That's all I have to say. Helmet, cool. I like always like the logo, the green. The If you, clearly, I, I'm sorry. We're talking about uniforms, people that listen to the podcast. You can either just check us out on YouTube. Just save yourself the hassle. But if you're in your car, Different shades of green, but it's all the green that's part of their logo and the yellow. All those kind of colors are in there. And let's check out the away uniforms. The away ones, I guess this is kind of like the leak one. That was kind of out there. All white in the middle. I like the away ones better. Than, um, so it's all white, but with the green highlights. There you have it. Tampa Bay Vipers the logo our team uniforms are out. So we'll have that one as well as soon as we can get back to our 
um, website because we're getting doing a podcast right in the middle of it. So there you go. All right. So we have those are released out now. We'll retweet that. And now let's get into uh, we have a phone call. Should we do that? Let's get into our phone call. And then we have our emails and then we are out. Let's check out our phone call. Yes, this is Michael Duncan. The XFL, the USFL Alliance, and the Canadian Football League can, can start a league. Four different divisions. The, 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 the USFL have a division. XFL have a division. Alliance have a division. And the Canadian Football have a division. You can call it World Football League. They had two conferences, the World Conference and the uh, U.S. Conference. USA Conference. If you guys work together, you guys be just as successful as the NFL. But I hope you guys play, play in the spring like y'all always do. That way, NFL won't go out of business and you guys won't go out of business. Both leagues, you guys have the World Bowl and they have the Super Bowl. Your World Bowl will be played on Labor Day or the day before Labor Day. The Sunday before Labor Day, you'll play it on that Play it on that day or on Labor Day. You can play it on that day. And I'm hoping that you guys will be very successful. The World Conference and the USA Conference. Four different divisions. Eight teams in each division. Four divisions, two conferences. And the World Bowl. On, <clears throat> on Labor Day or the day before Labor Day. That will make you guys very successful if you stay in the spring. Because, you know, you won't have to, you know, be in ticket sales, battling the NFL. See, you play the same time as the NFL, you got to be better than ticket sales, better ratings. You don't want to do that. You play at a different time for the NFL, so you get all your ratings. And when the NFL plays, they get all their ratings. Both leagues can coexist. And that's what I hope you guys do. you the XFL. Let's do this. Bye-bye. All right, we have a phone call. Basically wants to merge all together. Now, a world championship would be interesting. Or even a C- – well, you couldn't do the CFL because they're at different times. They just played their championship and they wouldn't play the XFL guys. But the World League, interesting concept. Again, we get a lot of messages that people think we're the XFL. And we are XFL News Hub. We report on the XFL, but we're not the XFL. I think he thought we were the XFL. But – I thought it was an interesting take. I mean, to to pull all these other leagues together and have them all play each other would be kind of interesting. It would be a big league. But again, who's in charge? It would be a lot of logistics. I think the XFL is great where it's at. I'm really excited about this season. I think we got two years. I think we've talked about the over-under. It's going to be three years. I think it'll be last more than three years. I laugh. I laugh in the face of people who hate on the XFL thinking that it's not going to last. But a year, I disagree with you. But thanks for the phone call. I thought it was an interesting take. On to our emails. Max says, I don't know why, but it makes a lot of sense to me for the XFL to have Puma uniforms. They sponsor Clowney now. And they made jerseys for some NFL teams back in the 90s. I feel like they could make a quality product and get the XFL in the news for being out of the box. Puma is not a, not a bad brand name. Under Armour would be a good one. Adidas. We'll see. That, but notice when you look at these pictures, there is no brand anything on there. That it's just kind of a generic thing. I think they're waiting to figure out who was going to be the manufacturer of all this stuff um, for the XFL. We'll wait and find out. We know Starter is partly in. Starter jacket. DC Defender starter jacket. I'm liking it. On to the next email. Let's see. Dan says, I just found the staffs on your site for all the XFL teams. It appears very comprehensive. Yes. Why isn't that information on an official XFL website? Not as comprehensive as ours, but there are some on there. Unless, of course, you're part of the NFL, for that, which I apologize. And, uh, if not, I appreciate your extra effort to collect and display staff information. Dan. Well, that's very nice, Dan, to let us know that you liked our p- 
page that's got all that staff. We're going to update it now. There's been a couple other guys that have been added to Houston. We were mid in the middle of working on that article. Then all this stuff started happening. So we will have that for you this week as well. But yeah, the staff's changing. But I think pretty much everybody's staff is locked in. I remember when that was that was like the news over the summer. It was like, oh, they got a new offensive coordinator. Like that was the big news. Now it's like, here's uniforms, here's team names, and everything else. So we're good. Not the news like it was a couple months ago. All right, finally, Nicholas, our number one emailer, our tier one, who is also, we'll throw him, he's in the hat. If you become a tier one emailer, that's how you can get in to get this prize. I'm going to throw Nicholas in there too because he is he has been a loyal every week emailing us. He's a tier one emailer. He is entered in, no doubt about it in our contest to get that $125 XFL football. He says, to start off, the XFL game balls came out amazing, and they did a great job. Totally agree. I am so excited for the uniforms. I believe they will come out great. So far, so good. If you look at the XFL, they have done everything the right way as in regards to how they plan everything out. Also, Felipe Franks just announced that he will either declare for the draft or transfer. But if I was the XFL, I'd reached out to gauge interest. His st- draft stock is not high, and transferring does not always increase your stock. Imagine him in the XFL on known TV channels to display his talents. It would be great for him in the XFL. It would also be the second player in the XFL 2020 with college eligibility left. Let's go XFL 2020. Totally agree with you there. Nicholas checking in as always. Let's hit the chat room one last time. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Zach says, yes, I was talking about XFL championship game. So apparently, according to Zach, that they will have uh, the championship game will rotate. I hope it's in Tampa or D.C. would be great. D.C. would be great. Tampa would be great. I bet you they would. They're going to do it in Dallas or in Texas. That's my guess. Or maybe it's Houston. Now you got to have it at a big stadium. I'm thinking it's Tampa. If they're going to rotate it every year, Tampa is the first year because it's nice area, NFL stadium. They can fill it. it will, I think that's where they're going to do it. Fabrizio says the Vipers uniforms look good, but that puke green helmet ruins it. Puke green helmet. Ah. I, yeah, well, let's take one more look. Oh, my gosh. Somebody posted this. We have to put that out there. The Twitter is just, it's just nonsense. What do you think about this? As the, uh, (laughs) there's a picture of some Avenger or not some superhero guy uh, for the colors of the um, Tampa Bay Vipers. That's not nice. That's funny, but not nice. But again, let's go back to the uniforms one last time. It's that green and green with the yellow. It's it's fine. It's not bad. Let me tell you something else. What's going to happen? People are already writing before all of them even come out. And this is what annoys me. And I bet you our friend, what's that guy's name? Pro football talk guy. I'm going to forget his name. Help me out in the chat room. What's his name? the pro football talk guy, that he gets on my nerves because he's constantly complaining about the XFL. His things, his fledgling XFL League crappy uniforms, he's already typing it now without all the uniforms even being announced. People like Deadspin are gonna, they're already saying, God, look at these crappy uniforms, fill in the blank, and they haven't even been released yet. They do this all the time. And it's weak and it's trash. Give me a break. They do this all the time. So be prepared. Don't be a sheep and follow these jabronis and give them likes. Let me tell you something. They already wrote that it sucks. They're gonna, they've already wrote that the first game was terrible. They already wrote that everything sucks. So be prepared, my friends. But we're coming here. We're checking it out right now, and we'll see what we think. It's all right. Dave the Usher says, I just noticed something really weird. The New York Guardians jerseys so far are the only jerseys that don't have shoulder numbers, right? Weird. The New York one does not have shoulder numbers. Didn't notice that. 
Fabrizio says New York and DC have the best uniforms so far. Joshua, I don't like the Vipers unis. Zach says Roughnecks equals America's team. How dare you? Zach, how dare you? DC is America's team. We went over this over and over again. It's not Dallas. It's definitely not Houston. It is DC Defenders because that is the capital of the United States of America. So here it is. You have fans from seven cities, and everybody else in between needs to be DC Defenders fans. That's how it is. That's because I said so. That's it. King Mart says Wildcats will have the best unis. I think they'll be pretty good. Uh, Christian says they will have surnames on one back. Battlehawks released a video of Tamino and Michael Sr. wearing theirs. Interesting. We'll have to take a look at that. Uh, Richard says people like that have no life. I think he was referring to those that they just hate for whatever. And there you have it. So we want to thank all of your We'd like to thank the chat room. We'd like to thank everybody checking us out for the first time. Remember to subscribe and like next week's question of the week. Who has the best XFL uniforms? Stay with the XFL News Hub as we release, as all these uniforms become available. Just check our site. You'll find them on there. We are good to go there. So remember our contest, the iTunes review or YouTube subscribe or be a tier one emailer, which means you have to basically email us every week from here on out if you want to get Nicholas level. You'll be entered to win an XFL football of your choice at $125 value. That's really nothing for clicking on a button. Winner will be announced on the February 4th episode of the XFL Week in Review. Why? Because that's the last episode before we play our first game. So excited. I will be there. Section 130, your DC Defenders, America's team. Remember, question of the week, who has the best XFL uniform? We'll get to that next week. Of course, the week after that will be the worst. We'll have some fun with that. Remember, if you want to be part of the show, you can email podcast at XFL News Hub or call 888-430-7692, extension 3. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. Just look up XFL News Hub. We are everywhere. And plus, download our Android app on Google Play, our iPhone app on iTunes. They are all free. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We'll read it on the show. Plus, it enters you to win the football. Pretty simple. And listen to us on, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and Stitcher everywhere you can go. For show notes on this show and all the other podcast episodes we have, go to xflnewshub.com slash xfl-podcast. Woo. That's it for me, folks. Thanks for checking in. Thank you on the chat room. Thanks for your listening at home. It's hard to do a show listening on a podcast when you're talking about uniforms. But heck, by the time you listen to XFL Week in Review podcast, you'll probably have seen them. So you can get our live reaction as soon as you get them. It's all good. That's it, my friends. Mahalo to all my friends. That's it for me, folks. And I will see you all later.